Welcome back to my Minecraft mod notebook, uh, Industrial Optimization 3. This will be Generator Analysis Part 1. The date is currently the 3rd of December, 2013. Uh, just a heads up, this will be a two-part uh, part, as the uh, previous recording attempts have shown that this will probably be about 20 minutes long so I'm going to split this in two. So anyway, on to some analysis. Uh, the first question that we need to ask is what makes a good generator? Uh, you're going to want a good power to cost ratio. So that means you don't want to have a generator that's going to cost blocks of diamond to make if it's only going to be outputting a trivial amount of power. Uh, ideally you're not going to want a multi-block structure. I've covered multi-block structures and why they aren't necessarily the best idea uh, in previous uh, chapters. Uh, you're also going to want a high fuel life, so uh, ideally when you toss some sort of fuel in there it's going to last a while. Uh, ideally though, uh, and probably optimally, you're not going to want to have to have a fuel supply at all. Uh, solar power, hydropower, uh, that sort of thing would be best. Uh, if you do have a fuel use, uh, you want to have a smart fuel use. That means that you're only going to be using fuel uh, when you're producing power. And you're going to want to have power produced in uh, usable quantities. So this will be focusing on the uh, Industrial Craft 2 uh, generators for the base game. And part 2 will be focusing on the uh, any sort of add-on generators. So, uh, the basic format, you've got the generator name, uh, pros and cons, uh, the base generator of course, you're going to need it for everything else, so cost really isn't an issue. Uh, the usability, this can be used anywhere, uh, underground, not an issue at all. Uh, a lot of people look at the EU per tick generation, Actually, most people, I think, don't look at the EU per tick generation at all. It's just, is it generating power? Uh, if it's not generating enough power, add a couple more on, it'll be fine. Uh, I have actually gone through all of the generators and looked at the uh, EU per block generation as the kind of deciding factor is what I'm using. Uh, this does use fuel, and the... To, uh, 4000 EU output is over 20 seconds, so a little bit of math there. Uh, realistically, it's probably not a bad generator. Uh, in fact, if anything, it's, to be honest, significantly overpowered compared to the other options. Uh, the downside, of course, you're probably going to need quite a few of them. Ironically, once we get into some other options, you're going to need more of the other options than you're going to need of these generators. Um, the probably worst downside is that is it is a low tier generator and it has the dumb fuel use. So if you need a single uh, single EU, it's going to go ahead and burn an entire piece of fuel. Um, you are going to need some sort of a tree farm, and I did not count that in the uh, block cost. However, a fairly sized tree farm can power quite a few of them. Uh, I do have a oh I had a uh, single 15 by 15 uh, mine factory reloaded uh, tree farm powering probably close to 20 generators so it's something to keep in mind uh, next probably the most popular is your uh, solar generator uh, definite upsides is your relatively low material cost and uh, feels free unfortunately you're going to need uh, a lot of them and at the time of writing this, I thought it had abysmal passive power generation. A uh, little bit of math. And you can see that you have a 0.54 uh, average U per block. And this is the best case scenario. Uh, this does not ac uh, account for any sort of weather conditions that's going to uh, obstruct power generation. But it's good for uh, maybe setting up two or three of these at the beginning. Yeah, that would be fine. Uh, 
next hydro generation uh, upsides as far as uh, vanilla IC2. Uh, it's a two for one, and this is, of course, according to the wiki article on the water mills. So I believe the wiki is uh, somewhat out of date. But uh, two for one, and the other cost is wood, so uh, you do get quite a few for uh, for a relatively small resource cost. Uh, it has both active, passive and active options. Uh, and the passive generation is a constant generation. Unfortunately, you're going to need a ton of them. Uh, and whereas the solar power had a 0.54 U per block, this has about half of that for passive power gen. Uh, even the active power generation is 1 EU per block. Really not that great. Uh, almost be better off just using the, uh, the default generators. Uh, the wind generators, another relatively uh, common option, although I don't think very many people use them. Uh, upsides, again, low material cost, and of course this material cost is somewhat relative, but uh, it also does not have a per tick calculation, uh, at least according to the wiki, which uh, unfortunately have the wrong address, but uh, simply change the water mill to a windmill, you should be able to find that pretty easily. Uh, the calculations are done once every uh, 128 ticks or about six and a half seconds. So it calculates it once, runs it for uh, the next 128 ticks at that output, and then checks again. So it's not going to be spamming the, the server with, uh, hey, I need to figure out what the weather is again, uh, update requests. Uh, and of course it doesn't use any fuel. Uh, the downsides is that you're going to need to place them uh, pretty much as high as possible. Uh, that's going to add a rather significant wire cost and again the wire cost is something that should be avoided when possible. Uh, the weather, the wind generators don't have an automatic cutoff and bad weather can cause them to break. Again, issues uh, the uh, calculation for figuring out what the weather is and what elevation am I at can get sort of complex. Uh, and by complex, I'm not referring to uh, incredibly complex, but more than just the do I have power, if not burn fuel, if I have power, output power sort of calculation. Um, it does have a a significantly better uh, EU per block. Uh, 4.6 is a very safe value that you can get. Uh, any higher and you start to get a chance of breaking. So at last we come to the thermal gen. Uh, this is also the first generator that's better than the default. Uh, again, low material cost, uh, usable anywhere, major upside. Uh, 20 EU per block, and this is probably the best generator for IC2, uh, at least when it comes to the default mod. And when I say the best generator for the default game, I'm not inviting the mod devs to come and say, OMG, overpowered, let's nerf this a bunch. I'm saying that from an EU per block standpoint, this is a good generator. Uh, additional upside, it does have the smart fuel usage. Pretty much the only downside that I could come up with is that it runs off of lava, which is somewhat limited. Uh, the nuclear reactor, which has recently been uh, pretty significantly revamped uh, for IC2, and I will be doing a separate video on this entirely, as once again there's... Well, saying that there's no documentation would probably be overstating things or understating things rather. Um, pros, uh, again, usable anywhere. Uh, pretty much your just kind of tossing in components and making sure that they won't blow up is going to get you uh, 40 EU per block. Uh, I do have a 350 uh, EU per block uh, option. 
which is probably the best that you're going to get uh, from uh, the base IC2. Uh, with a little bit of wiring, you can have smart fuel usage. And uh, once the uh, once you've got everything set up, uh, actually instead of 2.9, that should be 2.4. Uh, two hours and 44 minutes uh, per fuel cycle. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive to refuel. Uh, the single and dual cells actually give you uh, all of your material, all of your materials back. Uh, the quad cells uh, do cost a small amount of materials that are unrecoverable, uh, but most uh, designs that I use are single and uh, dual uh, uranium cells. Uh, downside though is that it's a relatively uncommon fuel. Uh, you might be able to get enough to run a reactor or two. Uh, two if you do a lot of mining. Uh, quarrying of course can get you a bunch but again that uh, raises, raises its own issues. Uh, they do tend to be complex and pretty costly to set up and probably the one killing factor is relatively complex EU generation calculations. Uh, you've got to go through, calculate the amount of heat produced, calculate the amount of cooling produced, calculate all of the uh, part interactions, and all of that stuff gets very, very costly very, very quickly. Uh, of course, you probably aren't going to have more than maybe a dozen uh, reactors in your base. Uh, very, very serious downside, though the out-of-date uh, out documentation. Uh, there is some information in the forums. Again, uh, forums, not really the best place as you have to go digging through uh, probably several dozen pages to find a couple snippets of information. And uh, probably the most popular or uh, potentially worst downside is the uh, reactors may experience catastrophic failure events. So with that, uh, that will be the end of part one. Uh, in part two, I will be covering any sort of add-on uh, power generation options, uh, focusing on uh, mostly Greg Tech. So until next time, think big.